Okay, what we want to do is talk about timing a 260. This is a machine that's ready for the deep soak, so everything's off of it. And we're going to discuss the timing procedure. Now, we're going to look right here because this is the white cam rod. And what I've done is I've taken my marker and I've made a black spot on the flat of the cam rod. And this is what your instruction manual is going to talk about. The flat of the cam rod straight up. And then they're going to talk about the hole in the drive cog. And what I've done is I've inserted a red straw in that hole. Now if the camera can move in a little bit, I want to show you what it is not. Is this hole, which is in one of the plastic clips in the top. There's a hole there, yes. But this is actually a hole in the surface of the drive cam. And at the end, I'm going to pull the straw out so you can see it's just a hole. Now that hole lines up with this rod, and that means it's lined up with the flat of this cam when the cam is straight in a horizontal position. So the flat is looking up, and this is facing that flat. Now we'll go around to the back side and we'll talk about the belt. Alright, now what we're doing is we're going to rotate that drive cog. And you can see our red straw is our timing mark. When the timing mark is at the 12 o'clock position, so if you were looking down on this, and we were at 9 o'clock, and now we're coming around where the timing mark is at 12 o'clock, May I add something? Yes. Jack is making reference to the clock as it would appear if you were sitting in knitting position facing the machine. Right. It, but at present, we're in the back of the yeah, machine. We're, we're in the back of the machine, but if you were sitting in the front of the machine and you were to look down on this dial, assume it was a clock face. And that means my straw is now at 12 o'clock. You can also see the reference of this little disc right here. So my straw, but if you'll look, it's between two of the little holes. We have a series of little round holes, and then we have one oblong hole right there. Now I will tell you that the oblong hole, it, that is where the carriage ties into the belt. But now look, if we come around to 12 o'clock on this timing mark, we're between two round holes. There's no way for us to tell which two round holes we should be between. But now watch. I'm going to stick my indicator in here. Look at the outside edge of that drive cog. Can you see that I'm in a little cutout? There's a notch, yes. Yes. It's a flat rim with tooth, 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 and then there's a notch. Now here we go. We're going to move in the same clockwise position. If you were looking down from the front of the machine... And what happens is this oblong hole matches up to the notch, the first notch in the cog after the timing mark. So this is our relationship. The first notch in the rim after the timing mark is where that oblong hole goes. Now what they tell you in the manual is match the oblong hole to the notch in the rim. But you've got to have this relationship that we came from the timed position between the cog and the cam rod around to where that notch is at 12 o'clock and then we put our belt on here. Normally it does best if the camera can move down just a little bit. It does best if you have your joining spot. I'm not getting where you are. Let's see. I'm not far enough. Hold on. There we go. Okay. What I've done is I've moved down between this first raised stop and the end of the card reading assembly. And in this area, if this is the spot that you join your belt, then you can feed one end through the drive cog and you can feed the other end through I the... I can't eye. keep up, Jack. I know, I'm just... You're zooming. Okay. Okay. You feed the other end through the idler cog, and then you can match this position that...
we need to have and join the belt a little further down in the back of the machine. But this is the essential thing. What we need to discuss briefly is if this timing mark does not oh, we just advanced the card reader. If this timing mark in the drive cog does not match the flat of the cam rod which we looked at from the beginning of the film mm -hmm. you have to By the way, ours is black but only because you made it black. That's right. It? Yeah, that's right. I made it black so it would show up in the camera. It's all white but it is a flat spot that will line up with this hole. You have to take this brace off underneath that drive cog. There is a little cam rider that's held on with a clip. That cam rider is what makes this card cancel out. But you take a clip off the top and the bottom. You take this brace off. And what you have to do is slightly raise this drive cog so it's not turning the cam rod when it rotates. If they're not aligned as you if, described? If they're not aligned correctly as we describe in the first of this video, that's what you have to do. You have to free the cam, the, the drive cog, from the shaft by lifting it up so it'll rotate while your cam rod stays in position. See, the relationship is as the belt moves this, here you go, watch. This is your clear cam. Okay, when that goes up and down, that's a cam on the bottom of this drive cog that makes that happen. But the relationship is that when this moves, it's got a gear under it, and that's what's turning your cam rod at the same time. So any attempt to adjust without disconnecting the linkage right. fails, in other words. Exactly. So if this doesn't line up so that the hole, which is, has the red straw now, isn't lined up with the horizontal flat of the cam rod facing straight up, this has to be disconnected from its drive and lifted up and rotated independently. And believe me, this little shaft in the middle will fall out the bottom when you do that. so hmm, kind of I wonder takes, how you know that. It, it takes about six hands, and I don't recommend that homeowners do it. It's not a DIY. If you're really good with your hands, you can do it, and the manual shows you how. But what we want to talk about is changing the belt and the relationship. And getting it timed. Right. The relationship between the timing mark and the belt. And it's the first gap in the ring of the drive cog after the timing mark is where the slotted oblong spot goes. So you would match. You can see where you And teeth Am are. I right in thinking any of the slotted oblong spots would do? Yes, that's what I was going to say. If you had your belt loose, you could hold this oblong in position. And you see how your notches are. If you take this off, it makes it easier. This top brace. If you take it off... It lets you play with the belt a little more freely. You can see where it constricts mm -hmm. the belt. I don't take it off. I just feed it through, and I slip it to where I want it to be. But for ease, take this off, and I'm going to back up just a little bit and let the camera look. This is actually a hole in the top of the drive cog itself. Okay, hold still. I'm going to zoom in. People, it gets grainier when I zoom, but you may see something of use, then I'll back out. We can see the hole. And I'm going to show you, just stay where you're at. Let me move this. There's one on the other side of that drive cog. But it isn't the correct one, or does it matter? Either one will work. The pro Let's see, I don't know if this one has two. Some have two. This one only has oh, one. Oh, this one, yeah, you want to fall. Only has one, yes. So that's your timing mark. And it is confusing. You have to use the manual for your machine. Someone wrote and asked, will the manual from a 270, which is easier to read, work for the 260? Not necessarily. The funny thing is that all Brother Punch Card machines are almost alike, that, but not quite alike. That's right. And this is the same process for... Timing an automotive engine when you put a timing belt or a timing chain on there. And after you've done a gazillion of them, as I have, 
you know what you're looking for as a timing mark in these different well, places. Well, when Jack first showed me the timing mark, I was going, what mark? It's not very obvious. There's nothing wrong with my eyesight. It just takes some getting used to to look for. Right, and on this machine, on the 260, it is a hole in the top of the drive. And I'll pull the straw out one more time. So we're going to send this out for a friend who's having timing problems. Hopefully this will get her going.